Hello everybody, how we doing? Uh, back here with more Mastery Quiz Fun. Here we're talking about the Geometry Mastery Quiz number 10. A uh, lot of right triangle information here. A lot of Sokotoa, Pythagorean Theorem, and some special right triangle information that we should all remember. So let's start off with here number one. We have a right triangle. <coughs> and uh, looks like we should probably have a right triangle symbol there. Looks like we got uh, two legs of the triangle that we know, and we're trying to find a hypothesis, uh, hypotenuse. Sorry. So, uh, what we can use here is just the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that two squared plus four squared. Those are my two legs. We're going to square those and add them up, and they should add up to the hypotenuse squared. In this case, it's d. Two squared is four. 4 squared is 16. That equals d squared. 4 plus 16, of course, is 20. <coughs> and then our last step would be to square root both sides because we want d, not d squared. If we square root both sides, you get the square root of 20. Now, some teachers are going to want you to take that square root of 20 and break it down into 4 times 5. And we know that the square root of 4 is 2. And we would keep the square root of 5, the square root of 5. Uh, your answer in that form is fantastic. <coughs> if you choose to turn it into a decimal, your answer would be approximately 4.47. Simple Pythagorean theorem problem. Next. <coughs> got some uh, right triangles here, but... Uh, with angles that we should recognize. You've got a 45 degree angle and then a 30 degree angle triangle here. We need to recognize in question number two, the first triangle here, that this would actually be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we learned some shortcuts. This is a special right triangle. And in a, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we learned that the two legs would be the same. So leg number one here is four. Leg number two here is also four. And we learn that the hypotenuse then ends up to be that length, four, times the square root of two. <coughs> you can always use Sokotoa in this case, but uh, this type of question is hopefully getting you to remember some of these shortcuts that we were learning. Uh, triangle number two over here to the right, we've got a 30. Looks like we're missing a right triangle symbol there. We another have another right triangle with one of the angles being 30. That means that the other angle, the missing angle here, would be a 60. So this is a special 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we hope that you recognize and remember the relationship between these sides. And one thing we learned is that the short leg of this triangle will be half the length of the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse over here is 6, so the short side would be half of that, 3. And we learned then that the long leg, in this case z, the length of z here would be the length of the short leg times the square root of 3. Simple shortcuts. Uh, just a quick review here maybe in the 45, 45, 90 situation. If I draw a triangle like so and call that 45, 45, 90. This leg is x. This leg is also x. The hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2. Okay. In the 30, 60, 90, we learned that the hypotenuse, <coughs> I'm sorry, if the short leg is x, we know that the hypotenuse will always be two times that, double that length, and that the long leg would be that that short side times the square root of three. So those are some shortcuts we should remember. Next question. Now things get a little more complicated here. Can't use the Pythagorean theorem. We only know one side, and uh, there's no special triangle here. Here we've got to figure out and use some trigonometry. Sokotoa, okay? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent 
is opposite over adjacent. That's where that Sokotoa comes from. So we need to figure out which one of those uh, trig functions we want to use. Well, in this case, we have two sides to find, C and B. Doesn't matter which one you go with first. Uh, let's start with B. And we need to figure out which one of those sine, cosines, or tangents I'll use. And it all depends on the relationship between our angle and the sides that we're, we're looking for. So our angle is 72 here. Our angle is 72. The adjacent side is 2. And if I want to find the hypotenuse, I'm looking for adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse, we'll use my cosine. So I'll start off here by saying, okay, the cosine of 72 degrees equals the adjacent 2 over B, the hypotenuse, which I don't know. And now i got to solve this equation for B. Um, kind of strange here. B is in the denominator. I'm going to multiply this side by B so that they cancel. And I'm going to multiply the other side by B as well. Now to get B by itself, I'm going to divide by the cosine of 72. Then I will divide the 2 by the cosine of 72. So to clean this up, these will cancel. I end up with B equaling 2 over the cosine of 72. At this point, you're just going to plug that into your calculator and come up with an answer of approximately 6.47-ish. All right, <coughs> define C now. C is going to be that, uh, that's going to be the opposite side of my angle. Again, here's my angle. C is now opposite, and I'm going to use the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, I will use the tangent. Define C. So I'm going to start off by saying that the tangent of 72 equals the opposite side, which is C, over the adjacent, which is 2. In either case here, I'm going, to I'm going to multiply by what's in the denominator, that fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 2, but in this case, the 2's just cancel. And I move the 2 over here. So it's 2 times the tangent of 72. I've got my C all by itself. There's no dividing to do in this one. So C equals 2 tan 72. Plot that in your calculator here. And you get yourself 6, approximately. 6.15. Uh, before you use your trigonometry and your calculator, please make sure to check your mode. Make sure the calculator is in degrees mode, not radians. That would be a common mistake. You might be doing everything right, but coming up with the wrong answer because your calculator is in the wrong mode. So be careful there, all right? Last question, number four. Again, can't use the Pythagorean theorem. I only know one side. Trigonometry going to have to go that route probably because 68 isn't going to give me a special triangle. So to find C here, here's my angle. Over here is the opposite. And this time I have the hypotenuse. So I've got opposite over hypotenuse. And that'll be my sine, right? So, S-O-H, the so part, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll start by with uh, writing sine of 68 here equals opposite side, which is C, over the hypotenuse, which is 8. Again, the denominator is 8. I'm going to have to multiply by that 8, get that to cancel, multiply this side by 8, and at this point, you know, C equals the 8 times the sine of 68. Plug that in your calculator, and you're good as gold. 8 times the sine of 68. Bam, boom, got it. Approximately 7.41-ish. Okay? Once you start uh, evaluating sines and cosines and tangents and turning them into decimals, those answers are no longer exact. They turn into approximations. So uh, if you uh, get used to using the little squiggly equal sign to for approximate, that should do it. lot there. Good luck.